my Power Rangers 2017 review. I will go through this in very long detail. I don't normally go through an intro, but I want a high level of production and professionalism for a film that's so dear to my heart. Power Rangers has been around for around 24 years, with of course this peak being the original series Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Super Sentai is where an amount of its Japanese action footage has been adapted or used stock footage from. It had a big history and also had the highest ratings from its first show according to Reddit much like Mighty Morphin did. It has a history with films. The first is the film. This is the first film with Dinozords, Jason, Trini, and Zack as the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. The first film had the cast replaced by Shemp Howard's Aisha, Rocky, and Adam. I'm not a fan of the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers film as it's not canon. The sk- script seems to rip off Day of the Dumpster but doesn't really add to it universe building wise, uh, plot wise, character wise. It doesn't really do anything very... It does probably D-level storytelling in terms of everything except the production. Turbo pretty much destroyed the film franchise, having David Yost left the show during Zeo probably causing problems with the script. Steve Gardinus also left, who had his character peaking in Zeo. He just wanted to leave the show apparently, which is something you can confirm anytime you see him at a convention. There's a long history with how Power Rangers came to be. In terms of how the five man, Dungeons and Dragons, different job class characters formula has been created. There's a big thing on it in, uh, I forget if it's Green Ranger or Rovang's history of Power Rangers, but it's something interesting to explore. I'm not going to go into Godzilla or Kaiju because that's not. The most important thing, why I'm going to get into is uh, Japanese history that ended up adding to the American history. So first off, this Gotcha Man, five superheroes in suits, first time ever. The suit, they have one big robot machine that they combine into. Go Lion is what the Voltron was inspired. Pretty much use the stock footage from Go Lion to create Voltron and. That was five combining mechs into one giant robot. And of course, there's the Japanese member stock footage. He moves to send a Go Ranger. Where all the members of the team sort of clicked. You had the leader. You had the multicolor suits. You had the enemy. You had the destroy. Although there's not much of that in Lionsgate. You had the female. You had the guy who was a little bit. Heavier, etc. The creator of Himusu Send the Go Ranger also created Cyborg 009 prior, and I wonder what he think of this t- team of superheroes with a m- woman of different sexual orientation and an OCD member of the spectrum. Cyborg 009 had people from all over the world France, Africa, China, Germany. So there's a Although it's not as much theme about anti-war and terrorism like Cyborg 009, at least it has a diverse cast, and I think there might be a chance that Shuturo Ichimori would be really proud of what they did with this kind of group, this kind of story. Shuturo Ichimori also created and really did like the entire sh- show era of Kamen Rider. Although... This is important too, cause like without Kamen Rider, we wouldn't had Himitsu Sunday Go Ranger, cause like it was the first Toku TV Toku, and like after a couple of years, they worked out the production for how they would do the fight scenes so that Go Rangers would be a lot more impressive, cause like the first couple of seasons of Kamen Rider, the fighting is not that impressive. This is very important, cause like how impressive is the fighting in? Lionsgate Power Rangers. Something to think about. I mean... A little bit of preview. Kamen Rider was not that important. Fighting was not that important in the original Kamen Rider. It was more about the story. Which I'll get back to later. 
Next, let's get to the history of all the changes made in parameters for better or worse. Heck, Lionsgate probably used this data to create a better movie, along with other topics such as superhero movie history, which I'll mention later. Mighty Morphin Parameters Copy the Saved by the Felt Bell formula, which is copied from the Vers Bueller formula, in addition to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles style of titling. Cousin Oliver, Tommy Oliver is the new kid. Same with uh, A.C. Slater in Saved by the Bell. Bulk and Skull were introduced to villains prior to them. Sort of like mini villains prior to introducing like the ones outside of school, the real dangers, which is pr a pretty cool plot device. They later put off his comic belief into the season and pretty much the rest of the franchise, which is interesting. Something interesting for the rest of the show, uh, for this movie as well. Season 2, new Zord footage. And a reliance on U.S. action footage was used. A lot of U.S. footage is obviously used in the Lionsgate movie. There's no Japanese footage, which is very cool. And uh, there's not, it's not the best fighting footage or action or sword footage, but I would say they did a pretty impressive job, even though it was production and effort-wise, it was impressive. The fact that it, it was done without Japan was impressive, although it could have been better. It was cool the amount of suits they imported from Japan in season two, which added to the US production side. It added a bunch of like, it started this VR Troopers feel where there's so many monsters on the battlefield and stuff. Although some parts weren't polished yet, action footage wise, fighting wise, etc. New Rangers were introduced after the old ones were fired. Season 3 continues more of this. New Zord footage. Catherine, a female pink, sort of six ranger was introduced. Fan favorite Kimberly Hart was played by Amy Jo Johnson. Wanting to consider do more of her roles. Zeo introduced the Zeo Crystal, which was introduced in... Uh, sorry. Zeo continued the Zeo Crystal arc in Mighty Morphin Alien Rangers. Zeo reintroduced the Sentai footage back into the show after years of using U.S. footage for the fight scenes. The Zeo Crystal became the source of the powers. Bully leaves after a dispute, oddly enough. David, David Joss leaves after a dispute, oddly enough, about sexual orientation concerning what happens in this show, in this movie. Although producer Scott Page Practor disagreed, and Bully does look like he's been upset before in other footage of when they were filming the show. Turbo introduced new powers again, a Kid Ranger, new suits, and Zords. No Kid Ranger in this, but and probably good for a reason, because it was a critical bomb, although Turbo did increase in ratings after the new Rangers were introduced. New Rangers were introduced, switching up the team again. This time, pretty much straight out other than Justin. New Alpha, new Zordon. In Space introduces Andros and brings a Return of the Jedi combined wall ending, tying up the Zordon universe. The Lynn era from Lost Galaxy to Time Force and so somewhat Wild Force. Wild Force is just the Scott Page Practical era, but we can do it's pretty much the same thing. So we're going to have a darker tone and broaden ratings, especially with Lost Galaxy, which actually outdid Ginga Man which was the 14th highest rated Super Sentai of all time. And Last Galaxy did even better than that in Japan, which is impressive. Not sure about the rest of the shows. Never heard about that in Japan or the US. Uh, they did certain things. They kept Alpha from in space so it wasn't like a complete reboot so the Astro Mega ship they had the team up within space the first team up since Alien Rangers since Countdown to Destruction the annual team up was more of a thing after the words after this till Wild Force and then the Storm pretty cool so, uh, Disney brought brought in a new company to take over the show which want to create films or feature a 
Power Rangers as a focal point compared to what Saban did. There's that emphasis on the Red Ranger. But there were hits such as RPM's overall cast, not to mention Dylan, Sky, and SPD with the Red Ranger, one, the Blue Ranger wanted to become Red Ranger arc. Neo Saban attempted to resurrect the original Saban craze with Mighty Morphin ish inspired characters. Saba Samurai had characters with names similar to the original Power Rangers. They had a kid's tone to try to do, like, say, Bay of the Bell skits with most of the story and stuff. Uh, very important for Lionsgate because that's basically what they did, except they got rid of a lot of the stuff, such as Blessings of the Day, Kids, Kid Actors of the Day, etc. Make a force to that even more by actually doing the high school setting again, much like Ninja Steel did. This was so it showed that Lionsgate was taking a big risk by doing something that Saban had already done, where the audience might not have been there for it because they had already been sick of Saban's failed attempts at doing the Mighty Morphin reboot ish thing except with a sequel instead of a reboot and obviously Power Rangers 2017 did a lot better and the fans were impressed a history in film and how Power Rangers was made was interesting too in the 2000s X-Men and Blade were made for darker tone superhero films after Steel and Batman and Robin 2005 introduced dark reboots such as with Batman Begins 2007 had non-child-oriented 80s, 90s toy commercial origin franchises created into films such as with Transformers. 2008 had Iron Man created as a film, starting superhero universes and superhero cameos, important to this movie as well. 2012, The Avengers was created for an ensemble superhero movie. Even with comics, there was an effect on the Power Rangers film. The last two years with serious boom effort by the writing crew and such with the Power Rangers mythos and details. The Marvel diversity movement such as getting an even bronzier age since the X-Men with x men Marvel superhero cast. Part 2 of my Power Rangers 2017 review. How did they do the film? When I first watched the trailers, I was thinking this. There would be no risk as they copied Day of the Dumpster, which is rated 1 after Saban took back the show in a poll. Goldar would be in the intro. They get the Zords. They get all that kind of pilot stuff. It worked to start the show. It worked to start the, this movie franchise. Risk. They completely redid the characters, changed the races, so that they're basically completely different characters other than the names. Lionsgate Tommy Oliver is the new kid. Everyone, including David Yoss at New York Comic Con, praised R.G. Siler, and they were right. These characters reminds me of the episode where the Power Rangers meet the girl who was deaf in the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger episode, the different drum. Captain Logan of the Geek Evolution claimed that Jason was anti-authority. I didn't really see a reason for it, albeit him and uh, Brother Media's Mike Stoke Glass mentioned this as well. Jason has a big moment as he grows into being a leader as opposed to starting with it at the beginning of the show. All the stuff I like is that they set up everything almost like starting off with it. It's a good origin story. A bit Batman begins like even though it's not that dark. Not that well explained. It's a begins approach. The Rangers learn the fight. They don't know the pilot and which is very weird because it doesn't really make any sense how they would beat Goldar but whatever. Zordon is imperfect. Kimberly's a borderline villain. 
Jason as a martial artist, which is given the Trini for one scene, and sort of forgotten. The jeweler on the combat bow. He has a football background, which is fairly negligible. Former the Zords could have made the football background a little bit more better. Jason isn't the face of the franchise. He is the popular kid at school, much like Kimberly. It's unlike the show where he's just a martial arts student, school student, etc. Kimberly sort of takes Zack and Tommy's spot for the big friendship role with Jason, and possibly more, as seen in the trailers. His emphasis on leadership abilities and relationship with Zordon is a highlight, and the moment when Billy is nearly killed off in the franchise, Zordon steps down, giving Jason the Red Ranger role in Billy Powers and Jason leadership, a highlight of the film. A noticeable thing in the trailers was a black joke of R.J. Zyler's character. R.J. Zyler's character begins not as a great fighter and is bullied, but really amps it up later on because of his OCG personality. They could have added R.J. Zyler and Trini to mix together how they could both be the greatest martial artists in the show, the game for the movie, Billy Jason, and possibly Kit really with emphasis. There was a big moment with him, as I mentioned before. And since there wasn't much to, for the Rangers to do in the Zord sequence, I would have liked Billy to use his OCD to get more immersed into the, the Zords. Speaking of the black joke, there was a major controversy over the Zack and Trini characters casting. Trini does do a kung fu sequence with Kimberly, which I hoped would be more Krispy Kreme product placement. Not to mention that Trini did the kata in the beginning and hopefully there will be more later. Maybe it was deleted from the new scenes. I still sort of find her character in an afterthought, although largely her sexual orientation is unclear and not adept. My heart feels like it was an attempt to emphasize Trini as the diverse female of the group opposed to the all-American Sweet Valley popular girl Kimberly was in the movie. She's been known as an outsider by many. She was the sixth ranger, according to Jason, in the WinterCon panel. I was John, sorry. She does an Eastern martial arts pose on top of a mountain, as I mentioned before. The discussion about sexual orientation brings about a 2010s, 20s discussion about diversity, even though it's even unclear what her race is. Something interesting that they could do is that they could emphasize how she's identified with Asian in later films or original cuts, but was later cut after Tess audiences got upset about it, or she's like with Ghost in the Show recently. Maybe they'll write it more in depth after a fan and audience and critical backlash. I don't know if there's anything I have to add about Zack, so I'm just going to copy and paste my thoughts on Zack from my previous article here. Same with Kimberly. There's a lot I have to say about the Zack in Power Rangers 2017 subject before we go into social justice warrior territory. Hong Kong stars are treated with a lot of esteem. There's not a lot of marketing for Donnie Yen in the U.S. Many action films are when they are marketed. Recently, post-2000s, there's a lot of comedic roles for that, such as that of John Cho and the guy from The Hangover. Recently, there's a Asian-American family sitcom on ABC. Hero from Heroes is portrayed as an immigrant. Zach, I hope from the Power Rangers movie will make Asian Americans proud. Him acting with the others instead of with his mother was a bit of a contrast. He's the wacky one, but he didn't get like Jason annoying by like milking a bull or something, or John Troll or the hangover guy amount of annoying. He actually was pretty cool. Someone you like to hang out with, like Zach in the TV show. In contrast, I didn't really get the city vibe from Walter Emanuel Jones. And he doesn't really start off as Jason's best friend. We haven't come to the blows, which may be a controversial change from the original Mythos, some people may consider. 
Not everything has to be exactly the same though, and other changes may happen later. Kimberly in Power Rangers 2017. I was a big fan of her in the original series. Originally watching the show, you think of her as a valley stuck up kid. However, rewatching the girl, the show, you notice things. She befriends a nerd, an Asian female nerd, and an African American. She gets good grades, she's not racist, she doesn't judge. She does dirty stuff like creating a float, caring without caring about her nails. She knows gymnastics and of course martial arts. Cares about recycling. She gets good grades. She gets good grades. I don't know how many times I said that. Like she flies a plane. She's knowledgeable. She's not an idiot. Not like other popular girl stereotypes. 2017 Kimberly was written as a new Kimberly should be. Popular girl beats up people. Demonstrate the horrors of being a popular girl. I believe the cutting people out of photos, etc. is cliche and I have no idea if it's accurate since I live in New York City. But she goes through a pretty dark arc, but I'm not sure was really there prior to them filming the fireplace scene, but it's interesting. She uses the pterodactyl sword. She feels bad for ruining a girl's life in front of her parents. They don't show that photo or the parents or the girl, so it's a bit detached. I also feel like they could have milked the arc a little bit more. She wanted to run away, which... The acting was good, I don't know, it was great, but I don't know, I, I was just not really a fan of the actress. I don't, I don't feel like, well, one thing, both Kimberly's have this weird territory. Attractive, but not like gold diggery, supermodel, trashy, B-word, attractive. As I would picture Sweet Valley High Girls. And I guess they want to to play safe I have Kimberly be a good role model still be good but then again she did share the photo and ruin someone's not to mention family's life good job in writing her though Lionsgate